Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to get a little broader because I think it's important to understand sort of the strategic vision behind our tactics on everything that we do. So if we go back to the late 80s, early 90s, end of the Cold War, and the gamble at the time was, um, if we created this international economic order led by the U.S. and the West, uh, built on this global commitment to free trade, that uh, this you know, notion of, uh, that this trade and commerce would bind nations together via trade, via commerce and, and international interest and, and, and economic interest, that it would lead to more wealth and prosperity, that it would lead to democracy and freedom, basically domestic changes in many countries, and that it would ultimately ensure peace. The famous saying now seems silly, that no two countries with McDonald's in them have ever gone to war. Um, that's obviously no longer the case, but the point being is that that was the notion behind it. It was what the then Secretary uh, General or Director General of the WTO called that world without walls, rules-based international order. Others call it globalization. And, and basically our foreign policy has been built around that. Uh, even though it's an economic theory, it basically is what we have built our foreign policy on. I think it's now fair to say that um, we admitted China to the World Trade Organization, Russia as well. I think it's now fair to say that while wealth certainly increased, particularly in China through its export-driven economy, uh, massive, uh, historic, unprecedented amount of economic growth in that regard, I don't think we can say either China or Russia are more democratic. In fact, they're more autocratic. I don't think we can say that they're more peaceful. Uh, Russia has invaded Ukraine now twice and the Chinese are conducting live fire drills off the coast of Taiwan. So I think it's fair to say that gamble failed, and we have now to enter. And I think the president actually hinted at some of that in his speech the other night, and we're now entering a new era. What is that new era? What is our vision now for that world in which not just the global international order and world without walls did not pacify or bind nations, but in fact have now placed us in a situation where autocracies through a joint communique are openly signaling that we need to reject Western visions of democracy and the like. So before we can talk about what we're going to do, we have to understand what our strategic vision is. What is the strategic vision of this administration on what the new order of the world is? I guess Secretary Sherman. <laughs> Senator Rubio, that is... Uh, Can you answer that in two minutes and 30 yeah, seconds? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say, that's a really profound question that I probably can't fully answer in two minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, but let me say this. I think um, we all hoped for that vision. But what changed is that Xi Jinping is not the Xi Jinping of the 1990s that we all thought we knew. He is a man, as the president, as the secretary, as the secretary of defense has said, is the pacing challenge. The only country that wants to change that rules-based order that can successfully do so and are trying to make that happen. It is true that our way of life, our democracy, our belief in our values in the rules-based international order is being challenged and we have to meet that challenge. And I believe we can meet that challenge uh, by, as the President discussed in the State of the Union, making sure we invest in our own country, which is why the bipartisan support for the CHIPS Act, for the infrastructure bill, what we're doing in the Inflation Reduction Act, all of the bipartisan efforts that have taken place uh, here in Congress are essential to making sure we can invest in our own country to be able to meet that competitive need. Uh, second, that we align with our partners and allies. When President Biden began his presidency, he said that it was critical to reinvest in those partnerships and alliance, and it is paying off because we are putting forward those values. Look at what's happening in our pushing back against Russia and Ukraine. Um, and finally, uh, we have to be ready to compete, which is why we have to look at supply chains and make sure we either can produce things here in our own country or we can do it with partners or allies that ensure we have the resilience and the redundancy we need to meet this challenge. But it is, above all else, a challenge about our values, and it is why the President really ended his State of the Union speaking about democracy, what it means, how we have to show what that means here at home, and what it means around the world. All right, I